Hi hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. We have another clutch. This time an old rusty CRV. So we are cracking on. Subframe's all loose, disconnected up there, disconnected for the gearbox on that side. And the old bar links will go with it. Ball joints are disconnected. So it should just be now drop that down and take it off. This bolt up here is seized in that little uh, tab there, so we can't get that out, So, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. And now we can crack on. So we shall position the camera. Here. Yeah, like so. And we shall remove a set of Ah, slowly, slowly, slowly.
much better access. Scratch mark on the top. We do need to scrape all this. Steam clean it all and repaint it, but so busy. <laughs> so busy on my hand. Right. We have, well, they're taking the drive shaft nuts off and knock them out a wee bit. So we've got two shafts to remove. You can disconnect the prop. Um, take that drive shaft out. And we may leave that on. I think we'll just leave that on if we can. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. <sighs> So we'll get it down, we'll get the air box and that out it. So, thanks for watching guys. Again, if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and have a great day guys, okay? Right, so subframe, drive shaft, drive shaft and the driver's side. Uh, where's my big torch in? <laughs> She's there, snap on. Look at that van again, it's annoying me. Uh, we've put a gold plug in it. We're waiting on a starter coming tomorrow for the van. So there's our starter motor up there, which we still need to disconnect. Uh, what else we got? Bolt up there. This plate, what's worrying me about is as well, I just took the dry shaft so it's not a lick of oils running out it. So obviously the drain is there and the fill's there. I could run the drain out just to see. If anything comes out of there at least, but so far it's nothing up there. It's not to say it's not just the clutch, uh, it's still driving. Um, so hopefully that is just the clutch, but we need to get a box out to see what's going on. So that's where we're at with this one guys, so we're not far away. Not far away at all, I've got the, the sleeve to unbolt, looks like there's a wee cover over that as well. So we've got the sleeve, two unbolts, two bolts up there. Uh, I think we've got all the bolts up out the top. I'll put it back down and double check. I know I've got that one, definitely. I think I've got the bolts out for up the top. Um, so I'm not too far away. Not too far away, we'll get hopefully a bolt going that way for the starter. Oh, no. So two of them are that way then. Yeah, okay, then hopefully we can get to them. <laughs> We can get to them, we'll figure that out in a minute. Hopefully it's underneath that wire in there. I just can't see it. So, thanks for watching guys. Again, if you haven't already, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and have a great day. So there was a little bit of disintegrated clutch just there. I don't see nothing else. So we'll get the rest of it out and see what's going on, I think. I don't see nothing else there. It's not to say there isn't, I don't see anything else, that'll make come off the looks out, a bolt there, a bolt there, and then one onto the engine, so yeah, that'll make come out for sure. What's this back one doing? Mm, that's all into the gearbox and 
Aye, that one's fine. So just that bracket that I need off now. So I cracking on, cracking on with the sheet of the polish stuff, isn't it? Holy stuff! So. Oh no! How about no? Yeah, it's a bit better. Oh, so. The difference from the tellers the other day, they, they watched the entire video laboriously and it was crap. <laughs> so, so thanks for that. Oh, that was kind of amazing. I wonder how you feel, man. You know, personally. Maybe you could maybe be a mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> hey ho, I'm just a mechanic here. What do I know? What do I know? Just a mechanic here. So we'll grab our 17mm Nielsen spoiler because it was easier. Come on, bugger! Oh, I'll take that one, I'll tell you. Spanners don't go on because they're thicker. Oh, it's just a bit of a length. We all need an extra inch. So she says. Hey, come on, don't do that to me. I think so. It's like the whole half an inch. There you go. You can't get your socket back here. So back for myself. Basically like a L200 or a Nissan Navara or something like that that you've got over here, Hilux. So same thing, pick up. Um, and they've put an IndyCar engine in the back. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Lots of space for that one. So I have an IndyCar engine in it. So they've basically took the engine out the front. Uh, made up a new subframe for it as well. Put all the NSX. Suspension and brakes onto the, oh, the front axle, and then your back axle obviously did away with that. It's probably leaf springs on it, let's face it. Uh, so, probably had horse and cart springs, so they did away with all that. And it's got a trans axle now, obviously, because it's got the, no, not NASCAR, sorry, the IndyCar B6 uh, Wonder engine. So, it's probably the same as the, probably just the same as the Formula One engine. So when they fired it up, they had to give it the drip to heat it up. So, the engine's that tight, yeah, it doesn't even turn. It's possible like that traffic. <laughs> Some of the way, man. Making them a new starter. But was the starter bad, or did the engine make the starter bad? Not in this one, that's a wonder. Always starts. Honda's 
never ever feel to start. I'm a seen a non running Honda. I've seen plenty of non running Reynolds. But. A non running sprinter as well, but. I think we know the, well, we know the fuel pumps they can. God knows what's wrong with that body, man. I think Fiat, whatever the hell it is. I can know the Hondas. Honda! Stands for always running in Japanese. Yeah. One day I'll be able to do more on Honda. And I'll look at it every day and I think. It's been 15 years, you can really see how it's progressed. I don't even manage one side yet. 15 years. Fixed everybody else's cars. Yeah, we're fixing somebody else's Honda. Yeah, it means a pile of crap. Ah, that doesn't look great. EF hatch. Doors, wings, bonnet, engine. Sounds chopped off, but it looks great. You know, so that's our moving one. That's that right. I've got my bowls as well, so keep them together. Yeah, they're popular. Yeah, ASAP for MD, yeah, must be expired. <laughs> So, I've got a whole lot there for stuff on the hotel. We'll get this uh, sleep off the ground. It's a so. beauty of the ramps. Yeah, that's lying about the floor. Oh, we all have to do it from time to time, lying about the floor. Uh, and sometimes, to be honest, um, for some jobs, you can just do quicker off of that. You know, say it was a timing belt or a feet pin tool. The time I could put the car on the ramp, I'd probably have done the belt. So, sometimes, we don't all go on the ramps. But yeah, that is a massive advantage on the ramps. Like, I did have somebody else uh, sleep me on one of my YouTube videos, you know, the trolls, they're out there, haters. Um, I kind of thought he's great, was uh, he commented on one of my videos and something. So then I had a little look, you know, as you do, you go and you scope this guy out, see how they were lifting the Range Rover bodies, and my friend did this as well, and it went wrong. <laughs> so I hope this guy, when he did it, and then my friend lifted the body off with two telehandlers on a Range Rover before and indented the roof. Yeah. So, you had to get out of the body shop and get all that fixed. So, yeah, that's how that guy was lifting the bodies, and yet he was still in the end of the day. Well, maybe it's just being funny. You know, sometimes things are lost in translation. These ones up here.
Wer ist die Tür auf viele Tipps? Wer are you? Six on a Monday. TikTok, poor boy. Yeah, not a boat. Let's get on with it. It's always a good sign that the Honda is solid enough when it's not bent in the middle. Should not miss ramp all day. Jump back four, back four, MOTs. Put that in the plug in. MOTs. Like this. Yeah. I think so. One bolt there. For God's sake. Tick tock again. Paul boy, whoever he is.
Very on Honda. Right guys, a lot has happened, a lot has happened, the gearbox is back in, the cables are back on, I've put the old slave on it, um, for now just to make sure everyone's all ticked to boo with this gearbox, it should be, the, the clutch was all halved in two, so you can see we've got the manifold out of it because there's a bolt in there, you kind of get to it, um, I, I just couldn't get nothing on it, so couldn't get nothing on that bolt, so I just decided to take the inlet manifold off it and the throttle body off it to get that out. So aye, uh, it's fun and games. So I'll tighten up these bolts in here. So aye, oh, there's my back of my camera. Oh, I went neck up now. So, I've got those two bolts down there to tighten. Um, you should go with a snap on it. Tools are everywhere, man. Tools are everywhere. We tried every bloody tool in the book uh, to get that. Uh, well, we had a rusted bolt in the inlet manifold, if you've seen that. Uh, if you've seen that part, everything's getting rusted on this camera. What can you do about it? It's getting old. It's old, but gold. So I, the gearbox, I have checked it. We have got a clutch pedal, so um, we should be okay, but you know, the gearbox was making a horrific noise, but it, obviously, you've seen the clutch was half and two. It wasn't in very good condition. Oh, man, what a pain. I don't know how many times I lost my socket down there. I tried the 17, it wasn't a 17 to the same as well. Hondas are brilliant, man. I'm no slagging Hondas, man. I love my Hondas, to be honest with you guys, eh? Um, but I don't know why they decided that one's a 17, that one is a 14, and that one is the only one that's a 14. I think the two stabilizers, uh, bolt bushes, uh, sorry, the bolts for the bushes for the stabilizers. I think they're maybe 14 as well, but there's no many things on this that's uh, on the gearbox anyway, so we've got a wee uh, cable to put on down there, the pipe's back on, that bolt's in, that's just to go back into it there, if it can, mm, that one's broken, so I can't do nothing about that, um, that bolt's tight, those three are running tight, those are tight, I need that bolt for that plate for down there, so we'll take this with us just now. I, I, don't, I really don't like putting ramps up and down for uh, doing clutches and stuff like that, but I've been at this for a while now, and I'm just I'm a bit all over the place. So, a bit all over the place trying to get that bolt out the manifold. So, I had to, uh, had to get a 380 socket, a 10 mil flute uh, for grabbing bolts that are all rotten. Just wasn't grabbing it, it wasn't working, so. What can you do, eh? So it just wouldn't grab that bolt. Um, so what I had to do in the end is we just couldn't get nothing to go into it. Nothing to grip it. I had to jack the thick engine mounting off the driver's side to the engine. Uh, jack it away up, no, out of the, the mount. And then get the, it was a 3.8 multi-spline, so a 12-pointed socket. Chapped onto it to get it off. 
I did try going with the chisel. Plastic manifold, never good. Never good. And the jacket has been chucked over there. Because, of course, there was a little bit of oil that ran run out. <laughs> Even though we drained it down, so... It was just the way I picked the gearbox when I got it off. It was kind of turned it. Uh, I got myself all covered. So we're cracking on now. We've got the subframe uh, and all that to put back on it. Subframe to put back on it. Bloody 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 all the bits to go on the tree. So aye, uh, let's say uh, fun and games these old Honda buses. I tell you, these old Hondas. Um, sure the gearbox was going to be knackered, I really did. You know, when you heard this thing, it's... But it drove here, so you kind of think that it's drove here. Um, I got a technician to look at it, and uh, if he was working here, he's not anymore. So I got him to look at it, and uh, he wasn't too sure. So, I said, hey, we'll just slip the gearbox on it. Um, we'll see what's happening with it. So, it's getting a bit tired, this one now, 2004. Uh, 2004, the beamer out there as well, that's a 2004. Um, and it's stood, stood up to the test of time in Scotland as well. Well, if you're in Scotland all its days, that one, the beamer. I think the beamer's got a composite body, whereas this one is becoming a bit of an onion. Uh, and when I say an onion, it's all its layers of metal are peeling off now. So that's what I mean when I say it's becoming a bit of an onion. So, that was for that bolt. Not the top up there that I, I brought down here. Not like this wee plate's down, to be honest with you. Not like it's... Oh, no, I can see actually, it's a, I think they've been using it as a heat shield to, uh, for the speed sensor on the gearbox. Let's see what I mean. Onion, that was a bit of car. So... Ah! So that one, that I lifted from the top, I can get it to here. This is something that's off at the moment. Yeah, I'm getting to think that was the wrong boat there, but it's not, so you won't. So, this guy will be getting his cab back today, hopefully. The dogs can get back walking, this is the dog walking mobile. So that's why I'm just still using this. So the point of having a good car for putting old stinky dogs in. Well, not that stinky, no, I love dogs. I've got my own dog, but most of the time, for us, it's, it's rolling in some fox poo or whatever. Uh, so I it can be quite stinky. <laughs> so I, they can't, they, I don't know why, hey, I don't know why dogs do that. It must be a high descent. You know, it must just be an instinct or something like that, even though they were wolves. Uh, but aye, so they still do that and they can be a bit stinky, can't they, though, dogs? So that's what this guy uses this for. Uh, the dog walking business, so it goes out and grabs all the people's dogs that are at work, takes them out their walkies. Yeah, that's how he makes his living. And of course, that's the 12. <sighs> so. Honda's 12, 14, 17, 19. You can probably strip the whole car with that, to be honest with you. Uh, just a couple of screwdrivers, a couple of hammers, some levers. I didn't get a whole car very much. So, we have spent a lot longer on this car than what we're going to be charging for as well. It's about a nightmare, but we can do When some, you lose some. You move my ratchet like that. See it? See you have. Oh, look. That's good, isn't it? Oh, I can't stuff like that. 
So it is really good for like starter motors and stuff if you see the snap on ratchet there. So you can move it into different positions. So no, I'm not sponsored by Snap On, but if they want to give me some some stuff, pretty much everything I've got is Snap On, they're honestly. Yeah, uh, there's other stuff here. Weavers, US Tools, stuff like that. Um, US Tools stuff, you got a lot of it on Amazon, if you want to see. I've not really bought a lot of it, just like weavers, uh, the bits and pieces. Most of it's Snap On, Mac Tools. Uh, there's some Mac Co as well, for you American guys, so we've got some Mac Co, in fact, that's a Mac Co jumper that we got covered in gear oil. So, there you are. a hoodie, I don't know, what do you call, what do you call these in America? A zipper? Uh, aye, so, we'll hang it up there because it's all covered in gear oil, man. The joys of doing bloody clutches and wood cars. Um, and there's a the clutch there, actually. Show you it, so you see what happened to it. So, you can see the... Fingers broken off it, clutches didn't the rivets, the bearing somewhere. So what happens is when you press the clutch inside, the, the hydraulic fluid goes down the, the, the line, pushes on that, these springs go in and that allows that clutch to come away from the flywheel. Sounds like we have someone else here. Uh, we'll see the so right, we are going to go just now and we'll come back soon. Yeah, so that one there. Battered onto that free eight. So I don't know if that has been a twelve at some point. Uh no like these other ones. Those end ones. It's because it's been in there, it's all rotten. So we'll get another one for it. Uh, to be honest with you, we'll get another eight mil bolt for it. Should have something. So we'll get us lifted up now and see we get a start of it. Good! Fun and games man, so I one bolt man can turn into a, a one 20 minute job can turn into a 20 hour ordeal just because of one bolt. So uh, obviously we could just uh, spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours uh, try to get that out. Uh, if you use excessive force you're going to break that manifold. Can't heat it, it's plastic so your options are either drill it uh, or try and grind the head off it and, and try and damage the, the manifold as you're doing that. So I now hopefully now hopefully because everything's off it subframe drive shafts really you can get it strapped onto a stand moved it the road do we see what's happening with this gearbox and fingers crossed that's all it is um, I should hopefully now oh, that's an extension that I can see but that's no. That's just came through the top. That's not where we want to get into. What we're wanting into is underneath this manifold, which that's much better. So I've got get a socket up here somewhere. I'm not sure where it's going to, but uh, it's in there, it's in behind that manifold. So uh, we'll see if we can get a hand on the, to the bolt, wherever it may be. So uh, I'll figure that out. I'll see if I can really move this a bit more. Take some wires off it or something, see if we can get a bit more stretch on it. So I will unplug them there and see. So I thanks for watching guys. If you haven't come across it before, sometimes the old one does. One bolt is all it takes and it can turn into a 20 minute ordeal. This is a 2004 car, probably still on its original clutch, original gearbox, and she's still going strong. So the old one does, they are quality stuff. So please like and subscribe to the channel and have a great day. Right man, <laughs> that was an ordeal and a half. So the bolt was obviously difficult. I managed to get the manifold slack. Uh, it's just couldn't it is I kept losing my socket in there. So if you look now that we've got that off, we still kinda see the bolt. <laughs> but it's got a bit in there. So every time I was putting my socket in it was just getting jammed. Obviously you get these two coolant pipes and the spider in there. So you get these two coolant pipes, thermostat thing there. Um so we just had to take the whole manifold off it, there was just absolutely no way. And to get the manifold out of the car, I've got the engine jacked up and shoved back as well. So I'm going to need to take the starter out of it, put the engine mounting back down on, then put the car back up, support the engine and take the gearbox mount off. So yeah, Hondas are notoriously reliable, um, to be honest with you. So this is probably the first time this has ever been out. Um, so that, that just kind of shows you how good they are. So but that's really what we need to get into now. This bolt here, that bolt there, and get the gearbox off it. But that has been going on for yesterday now. Um, so let's see how clean those valves are in there. They look good. Oh, looks good in there. 
there's any oil running down them or anything like that, so that's good. So I, that, that has been an ordeal, so we will crack on now. Um, like I said, Hondas don't <laughs> don't generally break down, to be honest with you. So fingers crossed, this is just the clutch, um, and we can get all this back, because I hell of a lot of work, man, for a clutch. So, two drive shafts, subframe, um, airbox, inlet manifold, battery, gear cables, slave, it's a lot involved, <laughs> it's a lot involved, uh, I've obviously never done one of these, and like I said guys, Hondas, generally, they don't break, so you can't beat quality, you can't really beat these Hondas, Hondas, Toyotas, uh, the Japanese and the German stuff are usually put together, uh, pretty good to be honest with you guys, so, uh, so thanks for watching, have a great day, and hit that subscribe button, please. Jesus Christ! So, I get half inch snow going. Yeah, hey, sorry, three eighths not going to cut the mustard. I can't get my socket back off either. Brilliant. Come on. Hold on, man. Never. You the broke something. Ah, oh, Jesus. So, I... oh God, I bet it's been a long time for the scene. These and the dealer as well. Though. I did phone one of my uh, guys I used to work with, and my friends, and uh, he's like, "Oh, I think you can get it, mate." <laughs> Without taking the inlet off, but it's been so long for these. I've been in the dealers, isn't it? Let's face it. Uh, 2004. You used to get them in the dealers and they were in service and away again. There was never anything wrong with Hondas, to be honest. Uh, I do have things go wrong with them, but they're really good, to be honest. And this one as well, unless I've taken the wrong boat out. All the rest on the gearbox are 17, and that's a 14. So we were in there with the way hang me. Uh, I did try once, I had the manifold slack, you could see it was near 17. Um, I just couldn't get, couldn't get anything on it, just could not get anything on it. So hopefully, that is the boat. For it. I think it is, it's never been out of there, I don't think. Maybe two in the horn. Got a little love tap. Across the road and then drives away in a rage. <laughs> Gotta get a camp trap at the door, guys. Obviously, the win. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We will be back. If you're not experienced, don't go in the ugga dugga. <laughs> I'm experienced.
Very familiar with Hondas. So I know what the bolts are going to be. So, this side is the side that's on the flywheel, and that's still been driving the vehicle. Alright, 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 that's a bit more old. Oh, there you go, there's a bit of that there. So, you can see what has happened here. It's just broken. So, it's knackered. Knackered, knackered, knackered. So, we'll go and phone the customer now and give him the good news. Yeah, you can get a few more miles out that plate. <laughs> I mean, the cover's knackered. <laughs> We're back. We're back again. We're back again for the CRV. That was a crazy man. There was a crazy man just come in there with transit van guys, right? Screaming about he needs a turbo done. Uh, he's going to buy the turbo right now and he needs it done tomorrow. <laughs> so we suggested that if he can find someone on such short notice to do that tomorrow, maybe they're not the best mechanic. But hey, well, I told him about three weeks before he got in here. So he's away again. Uh, very slowly up that hill, my UV is away. So that's going to be the way to get these uh, turbo probably for your car parts. We suggested fast fit. Uh, we recommend fast fit for a turbo. Uh, God knows, God knows, but uh, we can do it. Not, not, not this week, not next week, and maybe what week after. To be honest with you, I'm getting fed up with all these crap jobs. There's the pads and discs. There's the service armor. Oh, I think I've actually got a service in the lot, so... Ah, so... There we go. I did suggest to the customer, once we get this... Once we get a new clutch on the gearbox back in, it should fly together, to be honest with you. They're not that difficult on this. Um, I would suggest if somebody was looking for a car, you know, not to start practicing being a mechanic. Maybe a Honda Civic, an old Honda Civic or something like that. Well, maybe not an, a too old. That one's a 1990. So it was probably registered in 1980. It was probably built in 1988. Time it was shipped over from Japan. All that kind of jazz. So it's probably 1988. And it's rather rusty. So that's the problem you would have with it. But Hondas, for me, Hondas and Toyotas, they're pretty well put together. They're from an engineering point of view, from a mechanics point of view, other than that one bolt on that, that's the first time I've come across that on a Honda, to be honest with you. Um, you know, something that you, know, you didn't expect it, you know, like, like having to take a manifold off to get a, to get that bolt. I mean, maybe you don't need to, maybe you can get to it. I, I just couldn't get to it. I, I could not get in on it. So, and like I said, I don't know how many times I got my sockets back in there, so. Ah, crap, done it now. It's off there, isn't it, so. We are rubbing well. So we'll get this big mount on, then I think what we'll do is uh, drive shafts next, I think we'll be. Drive shafts next. Um, once we get all this back together, I'm going to be this later actually. Once we get that all back together, then I think what we'll do, can't see nothing because of that light, I think what we'll do, we'll get the shafts in and then we'll get the subframe on it. But I'll put, I'll put, gear, put the shafts in and then we'll put some gearboxing oil in it. Uh, about 85 and 90. To be honest, ETF guys, right? A lot of people will be oh, ETFs for automatic gearboxes. ETF um, works just fine in a manual gearbox as well. If you're having some issues with cold uh, selection, you know, from cold in the morning if it's a bit stiff, drain the gearbox oil and try some ETF in it. Um, if you're not comfortable putting all ATF, you can put half 75 by 80, 75 by 90, um, and mix it and see um, if that helps. Uh, I had, the first time I came across this was a gearbox specialist, and we had uh, basically in the dealer we were getting a load of problems with gears, and you know, I phoned them up one time and says, Look, I've got a few here for you. Um, I've got one that the gearbox has not out yet, and he says, Well, you know what? He says, Try some ATF in it before you take the gearbox out and see. Helps it. And I said, why ATF? I said, should we mix it around a lot? And he said, it's you know, got some gear oil? And he went, no, no, just all ATF. All ATF, he says, the modern gearboxes 
in his opinion, the oils that they were using for them, if they still are, they probably are using the same oil. And he says they were too, the oil was too heavy for his opinion. Um, and that's why we were getting so many, you know, can they get in the third, can they get in the second, can they get in the first, whatever it may be in the morning when it's cold. And it doesn't always fix it, but sometimes a DPA definitely does windows. Back to my quality snap on the record. I think I might invest in some, uh, some new electric tools. Fancy an electric tool. I've got the other one, but it's an odd one. The compressor's going to head off all the time. So we either spend six to seven thousand pounds on a silent screw compressor, which we probably wouldn't use that much. Or we just a couple of hundred quid on a electric hair budget, my key tab or walkie, whatever they're called. Snap on, I suppose we could go snap on. All the cool kids are using the Makita ones. Oh, sorry, not Makita. Oh, walkie. Oh, walkie. Or as they said in Wayne's World, Mealy Walkie. Oh, like movie, what's happening? Why are you getting stuck on ya? It's cold in Scotland, I don't know where you guys are in the world, let me know, let me know, where are you all? Tell me. Hopefully sunnier climates, hopefully the US of A. Uh, yeah, I suppose you get really cold bits at this time of year in America as well. Um, New York, all that kind of stuff, frozen, absolutely frozen. I've seen a picture the other day, I think it was uh, 66 inches of snow. <laughs> uh, the car was covered. Uh, I was absolutely caught in the snow, so the guy wasn't getting that out of the car, but it was uh, in America. I would be in America. Only place I wasn't homesick, uh, Las Vegas, 14 nights. I don't think I was ever bored. Yeah, so much to be done in Vegas, man. It's absolutely spectacular. Only regret is I didn't go see Celine Dion. I think that's who it was at the time. Just a show in general. I should have went and seen a show, regardless of whether it was Slim Dion or whoever. Uh, I know Big Elton did a long, long time over in the Vegas, didn't he? I think Brittany did as well. Not sure if she's still on there. So, are we about to get the uh, first up? Yeah, that's boy, I think. What's these shafts? Okay, 
clutch alignment as well, guys. We aligned it with that one, which was a that one appears to be honest with you. So key and Hyundai. That's just a plastic universal tube one. So I make sure you get the right tools and stuff like that. You do it by eye, if you good. <laughs> um, but oh it's just tools. Oh, I have seen somebody try and pull a gearbox in before. And uh, they did ask, is that lined up? And then oh, aye, 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 aye. and then bang! Spigot shaft as well. Boom! Right out of here. <laughs> so I don't have a false things either. It's never good when it goes wrong. So we have the prop already on it. I can't see how it's the light. It's really good, this snap on light. Really good. So, and be careful as well. Just putting these shafts in, you don't damage uh, your drive shaft and seals. This one has got a bolt that holds it all. This one, it gets bolted in. Oh, there you go. So that's that one. So, Back in. Did that like that, like so. Get a bolt, that was that one. Sorry, I'm having like, yeah, I did not notice that they were different. So, let's see if we can spot the one that's different. These two here, the holes are bigger, so there's no calls. So, yeah. Yeah, 14, there she's there. Extend she on. You know, I mean, I, I, I do like fixing cars, but I don't know if any of you guys watch the Hoonigan stuff. See what they've done, man. They've managed to build the whole uh, Honda Ridgeline thing with an IndyCar engine in the back. So basically a Formula One engine in it. So that's what those guys are up to. I can't even build one on the Civic. But yeah, here I'm at. Fixing this guy's 2014. No, 2004! What they want the CRV? Oh, for some dogs. I do. It's the horses as well, back in the day. Uh, some horses. Uh, one thing I will say about horses, it bites you. When it doesn't let go. It can be rather painful if a horse bites you. <laughs> yeah, man. Trust me, man, that's an experience. Also, after I've ever had to younger, we had some horses and that, with motorbikes as well. And what I found was, is usually when you've fallen off the motorbike, it was your own fault, right? But sometimes, Horses, just to say, you know what? I don't know if you, after you get in that kind of one. Used to have them on quite a lot. You know, horse would just to say, I'm off. You can hang on, you can hang on. Let's go with the gearbox now. Let's do that. 
Hey, I'll be back. Right. So, gearbox and oil. Oh, yeah. That is a mix of ETF and D-Work, I'm going to show you guys. I just fold the drum up the bit for the pump. <laughs> it's stuck on that bottle. Um, so basically what we've been doing is, is any time we get gear oil, it just goes back into the can now. Because we can't get the pump off of the can anymore. It broke, or somebody broke it. I think it was that, so they just bumped it and broke the plastic. Uh, bolt off at the securing nut. So that's what happens sometimes, don't it? Animals. Animals. And gear oil is really it's a heavy oil as well. So feel how heavy it is, so don't get ready. <laughs> Last year's Christmas journeys for the kids. Okay. 
So that makes them extra cool and then I use my stand the gearbox kind of fell kind of sort of like the drive shaft always pointing right at the force. Oh it's coming to transfer I'm not sure about this. Here we are. Here we are. We'll be back. Alright, so that's a bit better. Floor all clean. Ah, yeah, alright crap, alright crap, alright crap. Subframe, let's get this best bashed on. So I'll figure out how to do this and then we'll report back when it's on. Sorry, we're going to sit on some stands. In fact, we'll put that on first. Make it easier. We did the gearbox oil while the subframe was off. Just makes it easier. Um, and then obviously we made a mess as well. So cleaned up. And subframe on. Back then, uh, should be no far away, no far away. Getting there guys, we're getting there with it, so thanks for watching again. I presume my phone's up the top, because there's something going crazy up there. So, I'm not even sure if that's in the right position, but we'll, we'll soldier on and move as required. Coffee's all done, brown and fried.
this here. Let's see. Maybe call my phone. Got past. Four. So, Peugeot needs a seat back. Okay, so we Peugeot over there and needs a seat back. Called my Citron friend. Uh, no, Citron Peugeot, same thing. So, this is a little lead. And seat back, we're going to trust the Ah, sick, what's happened here? Same rooms, a little bit of the same I can have the practice of drums, man. Oh, that's gearbox, man. So. Oh, jeez. It's not a half half inch up. To leave it overnight if it's gonna get. Let's see then the first of the hit deck. Oh, oh my god. Well, we're all in. 
gotta ship that plastic as well. This was in a funny inch now, the wheel was a huge back a month ago. Solid. to be directed. I had a bit of wood left us there. This has a little slot in the subframe as well, if you can see that. It's got a little slot. So that slots.
Guten Tag, 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 Tools organized again. If you're not a professional, I suggest you use these ratchets I've in the hand. So that camera is pointing to the door. Aya! Oh, no. Uh, that's better. That's better. I don't know. Let's see what we're doing. What are we doing? So the one here, one to go. What's happened there? Do we need to move the engine. Right, are you? Are we around there? Stuck. 
Right, that's that bit panel beaded. So I've straightened that bit out as well. Obviously I can't do nothing about the radiator, it's a banana. So I not bad dull girl. Not bad, so nearly there. Wheels are back on, we've got that plastic, but we need to get a load of cable ties or something. And obviously I'm gonna need to clean my floor again because the leak coolant as the man folds off it's still type of red paint for Honda. Quality stuff. Quality stuff, man. Quality stuff. So I, I've got up the top to finish now, so. Uh, oh, bad boy. So I've got up the top uh, just to get finished off, battery in it, etc. Uh, we put that air on, yep, we did put the air on, and we have still got the inlet manifold basically to do. So that's, that's what we're going to do just now. We're going to. Uh, put the manifold back on and hopefully it's all good, hopefully there's no dramas here uh, I need to stop saying that, I was on my customers but I kept saying no dramas so I've obviously picked that up, that's what happens in it, it's been enough time with somebody so yeah, yeah 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 hey guys so that is it all done, we still have to test but hopefully all good Hopefully it'll be all good. Zip ties. Now okay, we'll tie that up as well. It's getting all rotten and broken on it, so we'll just... Where's it been? Into here somewhere, probably. We'll just cable tie it. Uh, I'll just cable tie it onto that. Cable tie it up there. Cable tie that up there, maybe. Yeah, just keep tie this up on here. Keep that up at the wood. Keep it tied that to there, I think. There's a black one. Like so. Can't do cable ties one handed. Well, probably good. Ah, right, okay, we'll come back. So thanks for watching this 152,000 mile uh, Honda CRV video guys. Uh, unfortunately you win some, you lose some. Absolutely every gear is okay on it. Into reverse, you see that selected it there. Don't know if you can hear that. You hold the gear stick. Forward it goes away. Every other gear is absolutely fine. Or seems to be anyway. Um, doubt that's anything to do with oil or anything like that, so aye we're going to park it up yeah it's just reverse ah, still this so. right we're going to leave this one here guys so we'll grab all our stuff out of this car now because we're going home in it but I'm just going to leave it here because a wee knocking noise off it and there's a binding brake on it as well on the driver's, eh, passenger's front, so we'll just leave that for now. Um, we shall take my bag back out, and I think we'll go home and somewhere else. We were going to just road test that, and the customer was going to pick it up from my house, but ah, I'd rather just, because of the reverse gear, um, I would rather just no, maybe run it as well and make sure it's going to be all right, so... And um, we'll see what happens with it. So, as we old, uh, as the customer calls it, old wanked out vehicles. So, uh, as a 2004 car. So, aye, thanks for watching again, guys. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Just helps YouTube let us, let YouTube know you like this kind of stuff. Helps our channel as well. So, we'll try to grow this channel, which is doing no bad. It's getting there, it's getting there. But hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up. Have a great day.